Hi, you're watching Professor Plays. This is my ribbon world. I just marked a bunch of trees for deletion there. I'm at the nuclear power plant, and I don't want to forget, this is a steel chest where the spent fuel cells are going. I want to put a uh, purple chest, right? Purple one. Uh, yeah, active provider chest. I have that research completed now. I have built a couple provider chests. And what that tells the bots is it says, come and get this as quickly as possible. So you can see how many have accumulated in there. Not very many. As I mentioned before, you just don't want to let that fill up. If that chest were to get full, the reactor would have no place to put uh, the spent fuel cells, and the reactor would shut down. But you can see how much of a buffer there is in there. As long as you don't forget, you're fine. So I put the purple one there. The bots will come and get those fuel cells. They'll take it to storage, as long as you have enough storage. And then we don't have enough storage. There's a little, little indicator that pops up somewhere that says uh, you need more storage space. So don't forget that. They'll get there's there. Are you coming to get the no your construction box? Anyway, they will come and get it. I don't know where they are right now. I want to um, I want to go down here to the end, the wall, and I'm going to build a little oh requester station so that the supplies are being delivered as needed to keep the wall repaired. So I'm going to need uh, repair packs. Uh, some wall segments, maybe a power pole, maybe a laser turret, and then use some logic uh, so that it'll request the train, I'll put deliver it by train, it'll request a train to come down here and drop off supplies as needed. I'm not going to do a continually looping train, we'll just, we'll just set it up so that the train comes down as needed. And what else did I do, or I wanted to do, I'll do that on each end of the, of the map. And it seems like there was one other thing. Anyway, I'll think of it in just a moment. So let me go. I, I gotta, I gotta get down to the other end of the base. Let me get down to the other, the other end of the base, and set up the, the requester station down there, and then I'll show you once I have it set up, and we'll explain, in again how it works. And then I gotta set it up on this end, the, uh, you know, the train and what it's gonna need to take down there. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm down here next to the wall. I have in my blueprints uh, wall repair station and wall supply station. Uh, except it's not there, it's under rail and wall. Rail and wall. Wall repair station, wall supply station. So the repair station is the one that goes next to the wall and it has a robo port which you can either leave in there or or use an existing roll. Well, I guess you need to leave it in there. Well, well, it's hard to see because there's a there's chests with inserters there, or excuse me, there's inserters that get stuff off the train, off the rail. Now, it does need to have a rail on it, uh, and I don't know if I've talked about that in the, in this series. See this blueprint I'm holding? It's got rail in it, and there's a robo port right there. Okay, oh, I just should I should just make this robo port in the blueprint, line up with the robo port that's there, right? That's the thing to do. Watch this. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why doesn't it line up? Oh, I know, I need to rotate it this way. I'll put the roll part on the bottom and make... It still doesn't line up. Okay, so those of you that have been playing Factorio long enough, you realize what the problem is. Rail, which is in this blueprint, rail snaps to even grids. So, Or another way to say it is every other grid. It will not snap to every grid position the, the, the factorial world is divided into a, into a grid, and uh, this rail, or any rail, snaps to every other grid position. It will not snap to every grid position. So if you've ever made a blueprint and you can't figure out why it won't line up the way you want, if it's got rail in it, that's probably why. So when I put that rubble port down there, I did not use a blueprint that had rail. I just happened to put it on a grid position that is not compatible with rail. I didn't plan it that way, but it, I'll just pr pretend I did. So now this one I'm holding, this blueprint I'm holding, will not line up with the existing robo port. That's why. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, well, it does matter. But <laughs> so I need to put this one down here somewhere and, uh, and get a train to come down here. Which way? The train stop is on the top right of this blueprint. See where my character is? There's the train stop right there. 
So I just have to have uh, the train get into the train stop. And uh, we could do it like this. So if I came off of this rail like that and put the, uh, I could do it like that, or I could do it on this side over here. Let's do it on this side over here. Get it line up with that loop there. And we'll just say the train comes down here like that. And there. And then we'll put rail down here. Like that. And like that. And do I have some stuff? I need a constant combinator. I have a constant combinator. You're not a constant combinator. You are a decider combinator. I need a decider combinator. Do I have a decider combinator? I do not have a decider combinator. Okay. Uh, I, need, I need. What do I need to make a decider combinator? I need some copper plate to make a decider combinator. Oh man, we're really, we're really working on thin margins now. Uh, let's see. What do I have to make it? Do I have anything I can use? Do I have anything I can use to make copper? I don't even have stone. Okay. I will get. I will get a decider combinator, and it will instantly appear. I better get that train out of the way. Pull forward a little bit more, please. There we go. Oh, I see some bugs. Oh, I see more bugs. Are we? Oh, are we making pollution? No, we are making pollution down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are not happy because we're making pollution. But we are doing fine. We're going to have automated delivery of repair packs. Um, we have flamethrowers. We have oil. I could put another roar of lasers if I need it. But the, why don't you have power? Can I break your power? That's probably not good. Now you have power again. Gotta be careful about that. Okay, everybody's powered again. All right, so this is, um, I have two blueprints I think I mentioned. In my blueprint library, which is on the website, professorplays.com, I have uh, two blueprints for this purpose for doing wall repair, and it's, uh, it's under rail and wall. It is called wall repair station and wall supply station. The repair station is the one I have here. That's the one you put next to the wall. And it has, the, these are the purple inserters you can see right there. Do I have any of those? Filter inserters? Let me see if I can make some more filter inserters. It's set up to request items from the train. Now you can change the request to whatever you want. This is what I would think you would typically want in a wall. So you can see it's flamethrowers. Medium electric, wall segments, uh, pipe for the fluid for the flamethrowers, repair packs over here, and then construction bots. And so then you just put the inserters in there, like that, and put the inserters over here. Repair packs and construction bots are, are transferred directly into this robo-port. The other items are placed in those chests. The construction bots can grab those and use them as needed. This is a decider combinator. You need one of those and this is a constant combinator you need one of those now the way i did it is in the in the constant combinator i put the items i want delivered to this station and i put them in there as negative numbers so whatever you want you can see how many slots you have available there what items do you want put them in there as a negative no and, and, and quantity. So negative 20 means I want 20 repair packs, at least 20 repair packs. The stack size, if you know what that is, in Factorio, items have a stack size. So when the inserter grabs visitors, they've been visiting here periodically. When the inserter grabs something, it grabs a stack of them. So if, if you're requesting four flamethrowers and you look and you have more than four, that's because the stack size is bigger than four. So, so this is the minimum number that I want. It's basically the way it's set. And the train is, well, I have to put a 
cargo wagon on here yet. I don't have that yet. But the train comes down here with the cargo wagon with the items in the train. And then the inserters uh, unload the items as needed and place them into the chest. And then once they're in these chests, the construction bots have access to them. And then the construction bots, because they can't get destroyed, construction bots are replenished here. They're placed in the, in the RoboPort and repair packs, which get consumed. They're placed in the RoboPort as well. And then you need to be able to get back to the rest of the base. Will you, will you go one more? No, one more is too many. You need to go there. No, oh, I guess I still had too many. You need to go there, like that. And you are going to need a signal there. And you are going to need some signals down here, like that. Okay, that train couldn't move because I had a because they had this train sitting on the track without signals, now they can move. So now these are all separate rail segments. Uh, this is a separate segment here, and this will make the train this this will make this train wait until the rail is clear, and then it will continue on down. And did I put you in there? Yeah. Okay. And did I put you? Yes. Okay. So now this uh, this is set up. This end is set up. Now I've got to go set up the supply station in the base that puts all the stuff into a train. And again, the the train is, well, I'll show you. It's a very small train. Locomotive there, and then a, if I have one, a cargo wagon uh, behind it. I, don't even, I may not even have a cargo wagon. I'll get one. Here's one right here. Uh, and a cargo wagon back here. That's That's all it is. Locomotive, cargo wagon. So I'll go back to the base and set up the other end of this, the supply end of this. And are you named correctly? Yeah. So the the, st the train stop is called wall repair. Let me go back to the base and set up the other end. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back in the base and I'm going to set up the wall supply station. I have a blueprint for that. Rail and wall, wall supply station. Looks like this. I was just looking at that blueprint. I'm going to have to change that, uh, I think, because you don't always have the situation where you have the two rail. No, oh, it's hard. So this is designed for the two rail setup, and it's designed for the station to go on one side of the two rail setup. But I don't have that here. I have my my uh, unload all station. I'm thinking I'm going to put the the station here. To load the supplies so my blueprint really doesn't doesn't accommodate that too well does it so um, I'm gonna make a copy of this show you how I'm gonna do it and then maybe I should change the actual blueprint so if I go to the wall supply station give me a copy of this and let's put that in there and then I don't want this right I'm holding down the right mouse and I can edit that remove that like that and that would give me, in fact, I don't even, I don't even want the rubble port in there. I just want this part of it. I just want the, the siding with the train and the chests. That's what I want for, for the wall supply station. So I'll save that. I'll give me that one I just edited. That's this one. So now I can put that wherever I want. So let me just line this up with, um, if I just, if I just line that, you know what, I'm going to change that even more. I'm just going to make it look like one of these, uh, one of these spurs here on this unload all station. Yeah, I think I like that. So let me have this again. Where'd you go? This one. Yeah, I don't want this part at all. And I will just put this part down here like that. I'll save that. I'll give me that. So if I just lined you up like you were one of the other spurs, yeah, that would work. So let's do... Let me 
me put that in there first, then I'll figure out where it needs to be. Where did you go? You are this one. So we line you up. We line you up vertically. Like that. That looks like it's lined up to me. Now will you make will you make this turn? You should make the turn if I put you in the right place. Yes. Yes, that turn. You could make that turn and then down here. There's a spot of water there. A puddle. Are you... Yes, you're lined up. Like that. I could have put, put that over one spot to the left, couldn't I? Or could I? I could have. Okay, I'll fix that. I will fix that and be right back. I did not have the recipes in the logistics store for the different logistic chests. So I just corrected that. I took the blueprint and pasted it back down on there. So now the recipes are in there for those chests and the bots will deliver them uh, to my wall supply station. So let's go take a look at that. So here's the wall supply. I made it a little bit more compact. Looks like the part of the unload all station now. And here's the chest that will be delivered. I just put that recipe in there. And there's the train that's going to wait for the stuff to be delivered. And it'll take the stuff down there to, uh, to the wall. And the train should be programmed. Uh, it goes to wall supply. And then it goes to wall repair. Right now it just does a loop. It just uh, says go wall supply. Wait 30 seconds. Go wall repair. Wait 5 seconds. I always do that just to make sure it works. And so once the stuff is here, there's the chest. And then the requests should be in there. Yeah, so the requests are already in there. I need to wait now for the stuff to get delivered because they obviously can't deliver them without the chest. So once the stuff is delivered, then I'll come back and I'll show you uh, the train in action. So be back later. I discovered I had something missing in my wall supply station blueprint. I'm glad I noticed that. Uh, there were no repair packs being loaded into the wall repair train. So I've corrected the blueprint. Uh, it will, it, well, when you see this, it'll be up on the website, professorplace.com. So now the wall, not the wall, the wall supply station, this one, there's this extra chest over there, which is for repair packs, which I didn't know was missing. I'm glad I noticed that. Okay, so now I've been playing around a little bit. I uh, put a rail to the... You already saw this. There's a rail going down to the wall on the left, way down there. And there's a wall repair station down there. I also ran a rail through the base. I had to remove some stuff to get it through there. But uh, So starting here, this train can now go to the right. It can go down here. It's a single rail. And it, so that when you use a single rail, trains can go in both directions. So you put a signal on each side like that. So it goes down through here. Uh, it goes down through here. I removed part of the old power plant, which we don't need anymore. I left part of it in there to, to burn up wood if I want to in the future. But it goes down through there. A um, little land bridge across the water. Down through here. I uh, took out some drills on the mining drills on the coal mine, which I don't need that coal mine anymore. And it goes down through there, down through there, around through there, down through there, around through there. Keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. It's a really long base. And down here, and here's a wall repair station at the, 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 the east wall. Right there. With the same setup that we had on the other wall. Where it would request uh, the various materials needed to repair the wall and construction bots and repair packs go in there. Okay, and so when there's damage that occurs down here, uh, the or damage that occurs on the other end on the other wall, then the um, the train will come down here and replenish the supplies. Now how, the way it works is this uh, circuitry here is connected to the train stop. 
when there's something removed from one of the chests, the the logic knows there's not enough stuff anymore. It compares the numbers in the combinator, the constant combinator, with the numbers in the chest. And when the numbers in the chest are not big enough, in other words, when items have been removed, like a wall segment or a laser has been removed, then that enables the train stop. The logic enables the train stop. Once the train stop is enabled, this train will go to that wall repair stop. Now notice this is red right here. It says wall repair. That's red because those train stops are currently disabled. So if there's some damage down there and the logic on that end, whatever it is, whichever end it is, if the logic down there, if items are removed, this logic will enable that train stop. Or the other, same thing on the other end. And then once that train stop is enabled, the train can go to that stop. So the train will just sit here in this station until there's damage on one wall or the other, and then it, that will be enabled and the train will go to that stop. I also had a little bit more fun. There's a siren right here, speaker, and it's set to be siren mode. And I wired it up to the, the signal lights, the rail signal lights. And the logic says if the, the signal is red, then sound an alarm and the alarm is a siren. So, if I get in the train, I can demonstrate it just by driving manually. Let's assume there's damage on one end or the other. That train stop down there will be enabled. The train will then be able to, well, it's already programmed, to go to that stop. So, well, let's say this is enabled. The train will start heading to that stop. I'll just put it on manual to show you what happens. When the train pulls out of this station and gets onto this either segment, rail segment, this light turns red. Right When the train gets on that track, this light will turn red. When that light turns red, this siren says, hey, if the light is red, sound the siren. Here's what happens. I'll, I'll go to the right. So it goes through, it just does one siren like that. One siren sequence. It may do it again now that I'm backing up, but... It, that, it just does it once normally. Yeah, it's doing it because I'm backing up. It's going to do it again. Like that. It's a little fun. It also is kind of handy if you're, if you're out and about and you don't realize there's a train running, which is a good way to get run over. Uh, when you hear that siren, you'll know there's a train. Now, you won't know which way it's going. You can go to the right or the left, but it'll it'll kind of be a reminder to stay off the track. I guess the, this direction, there's already trains running. You should stay off the track anyway. The one that's dangerous is the rail that I ran through the base right here. So you want to know for sure when that train is running in case you're, in case you're down there working on something. Make sure you get off the track. So That's what it looks like now. So now it should... I haven't verified it by actually damaging the wall, but I'm assuming it's going to work. Uh, so if the bugs damage the wall, which they will eventually, they've, they've still been attacking. If they damage that wall... Oh, I moved the radar down closer to I put a radar right there so I can keep better eye on them. If they damage either wall, the train will go down to replenish supplies. What are you blinking about? Oh, it's a light. The train will go down to replenish supplies and... Uh, then we'll hear the, the siren go off. Are you the indicator light? Can't really see if there's a wire there or not. You might be. I put a light. Uh, is it in my blueprint? I put a light there because it the the train stop has a little light on it, but it's very hard to see. So I might have wired up a light to make it easier to see. Uh, let me look at the blueprint here. That one is, you would be the wall repair station. Yeah, I'll show you here. So this light, see there's a wire. This light is wired up to mimic the train stop light. So when that train stop is enabled, and again, you can't really see it, but there's a light right there on the top of the train stop. It'll turn green. This light will turn green to reflect that.
So you are... You can't really see, but that's the light right there. But you're not even there, are you? I need to put that light down there. I didn't have a light on me when I built that. And there should be the same thing down here. And I did have that light. Okay, yeah, so that light is wired. You can see it. I just need to put a light down here on the other end to make sure that it lights up. In fact, do I have a light on me? Do I have a light? Let's go down there and put one down there while I'm thinking about it, or I will forget. That, that uh, train stop is disabled, so I'll just have to drive manually. Just be careful when you're driving manually. Where is that light? Oh, I have my, my, my bot. You didn't even see it, did you? My bots were enabled. They didn't even realize it. And as soon as I pulled up there, they put the light. There it is right there pointing at it. So the bots put it in there for us. Okay, taking it back to the... Now let's turn my bots off again so they don't go wandering off. Okay, take me back to wall supply. Yeah, we're still getting visitors. Anyway, now we have automated supply to the wall. And you'll know how frequently the bugs are damaging the wall, because every time the train leaves the station, that siren will go off. I think they're getting closer to the wall. Well, we got something for you uh, later on, maybe. We'll give you an artillery to play with. All right, there we go. So there's the wall supply, wall repair station, all wired up and working. I was just doing a base survey and um, as normally happens, Steel is weak. Let's go to map view and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So steel is here. This is the steel production. It's not very much from the starter steel onto that belt and it just it gets used up by everything down the line. All the sciences, especially the purple science, really gobbles up steel. And it's already been, been used by the time it gets down here. So that's pretty weak going in there. And this, it's not running. This, these are not all running. This, basically half of this is running. It's running down to there. Yeah, it is exactly half. So those four machines are running. These are not. And it's because of steel. So normally what I do at this point in the game is I do uh, remote steel smelting and bring it in by rail. There is, uh, in my rail yard, one of the, the stations is for steel. This one here. If I point to that station, it says uh, on the right there, it says, Train Stop Steel Unload. Um, I can't really use an iron mine to the right because there's no way to get a... Well, I've got this one rail in there, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to go to the left, find an iron deposit down here, and set up remote steel smelting using electric furnaces, and bring in additional steel by rail, because I already have the rail going down here. Uh, the only issue is the... Um, the iron mine is this one, and I'm already using that, and it's not even full with those yellow belts, so I need another iron mine, and there's that means this one. So these bugs are going to have to go. I need that iron mine for my remote steel, and I think what I want to do is, I, I won't have time to do it today, but I think what I want to do is I'm going to use artillery to get rid of those bugs. So I have... Um, 
I have a, a mall logistic blueprint, this one, and it, it uses chests, logistic chests. The bots bring material, it builds the items, it puts the items into a chest, and the bots can grab the item. These have not been researched yet, This and this is what I want. This is the individual artillery, that's the artillery wagon, and then that's Spidertron and that Spidertron remote. So I need to do uh, research for artillery, and then I'll use some artillery to remove those bug bases. So Coverex is researching now. These are all expensive researches at this point. Coverex is more than halfway finished. Yeah, so I'll just let that one run. I'll let Coverex finish, and then I'll let artillery finish. And then, oops, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put that logistic mall. It needs, the bots need to deliver material to it, and it needs to be in the orange area, the logistic area of a rubble port. Now the good thing about it is, yeah, because it's logistic delivery, all it has to be is in the orange area. You don't need to have access by belt. Let's see, where did it go? Um, mall logistic, mall logistic, right here. It's very small also. So just in the orange anywhere, like right there it would fit. So the stuff that it needs to bring in there, raw material, um, is going to be in here somewhere. How about right there? That looks good to me. So right in there, I'll put this down, click, the bots will build it, and then the recipes that are there it'll start building. Once the research completes for the artillery, I'll put those recipes in there and then it'll start making artillery. The only thing you have to do if you use this is you have to go through the chest and you have to figure out what's being requested and then go around your factory and put the requested items inside. Uh, well, I usually norm normally use a red chest passive provider, either that or one of the yellow ones. Put those items in one of those chests so that boss have access to it. And then they'll deliver the items over here, and these things will start running. Some of the yeah, there are some of them are already in chests, so they're already bringing them over here. But I'm going to wait for the artillery research to complete, fill this in, set it up so this starts making artillery, and then once it makes artillery, I can use that. Now the only other thing I'll need is I'll need oh I, the research isn't completed. I'll need the artillery shells, and that blueprint. It makes artillery shells is already over here somewhere I think it's called big bullets it's, it's big bullets it's the one that makes the uh, tank rounds right here so once the artillery research completes I'll put the recipes in here that's the artillery shells so I'll let that research run I'll uh, I'll show you once the research for artillery completes putting those recipes in the the logistic mall and putting the recipes over here and then we'll get some artillery and artillery shells and clear out some bugs on the end down there. Okay, the research completed for artillery. I put the recipe in here. I also uh, upgraded these machines. So now they're machine threes, which are faster, and it's making artillery shells. And these uh, chests, these steel chests are just a buffer, and then they go over into the logistic chest, and it's one artillery shell per slot. So they just started making those. And then the um, logistic mall, I put the recipes in there. Let's go over here so we can see that. So it now has the recipes to make the individual artillery and the artillery wagon. So there's the individual artillery recipe there. There's the artillery wagon recipe down there. In fact, it already has a couple of them in there. Okay, good. I'll put those on the end down there and we'll use those to clear out the biters. In fact, do I have one? I don't remember if I picked up one or not. Give me... No, give me one of those. Um, I think about that. I don't, know, I don't know how I'm going to deliver the artillery shells down there. I don't need to clear out that many bugs. Because after all, it is a skinny world. I could just throw some in a train. Uh, take them down there with me in a train. And then uh, clear out the bugs. I just need to clear out enough bugs to get access to that iron mine over there. And then I don't know if I need to clear out anything on the right or not. Well... 
Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I prefer. I just want really on the left. That's what I want is the iron mine on the left so I can get remote steel going. Ooh. Oh, that coal looks weak. What is going on with that coal? Coal, coal, coal. What is going on with you? It's, it's just being used, right? Yeah, okay. That's from the train. That is full, that is full. It's full there. And yeah, okay, it's just getting split off. That's fine. That is fine, no problem. I gotta figure out how I want to get artillery shells down there. How do I want to get artillery shells down there? Um, you know, for the amount of clearing that I'm going to do, I'm just gonna carry them down there. I think I can carry enough artillery shells. It may take me two trips, but I think that'll be fine. It's simpler to do it that way. So let me grab some artillery shells. Where did I put that? Make sure I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, I thought it was down here. Going in the right direction or going in the wrong direction? I'm going in the correct direction. There we go, artillery shells. Let me make some inventory space. Wait, do I have any logistic requests? No. I do not. Thing that I just threw away. Well, I didn't throw it away. Do I need anything that I put into a chest? Or do I think I'll need anything that I put into a chest? No, I just want to carry artillery shells. Oh, I'll need some repair packs, maybe. Where did I put those? Repair packs. I didn't have very many today. Repair packs. And uh, maybe lasers in case something gets damaged. Maybe wall. In case the fighters damage some walls, maybe some lasers, because they're going to counterattack. And, uh, maybe some, maybe, 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 maybe that's all. Maybe. I need gears and circuits. Maybe some gears and circuits. Did I throw away gears and circuits? Did I throw away gears and circuits? There's some circuits, not very many though. And not very many gears either. Alright, let's find out. Give me some of these. Alright, and that filled up my inventory. Oh wait, did I get... I'm going to need an artillery. <laughs> it's not going to do much good to go down there without the thing I need to do, to use. Uh, so I need... I need an artillery. And I'm going to need a little bit more room. I'm going to need I'm going to need some inserters or and yeah, some inserters inserters. Uh, where's where did I put you inserters? Give me some inserters and a chest. Okay, inserters, chest. 
Oh, I'm gonna need some electric. Let's see, do I have some electric stuff? Electric stuff. And... Service chest. Uh, and then I'll need... And I will need the artillery gun. Did I, did I pick up an artillery? Did I pick up the artillery? Uh, apparently not. I didn't pick up an artillery. Thought I did. Guess I didn't. I tell you, I'm, I'm even more confused than normal recording this episode because I recorded started recording this episode a couple days ago and then I realized after I was into the thing that I forgot to turn on the microphone preamp so none of my audio was being recorded so I'm really really discombobulated now so we'll get it back together here in just a moment okay so give me are you doing something yeah there we go give me that okay I got that I got a bunch of bullets I got some other stuff. Let's go down here and antagonize some bugs. I did every repair packs, right? Oh, I need to make more repair packs. What do you need? You need gear and circuit. Gear and circuits. All right, that's enough. That's enough. I don't need train fuel because the train should already have fuel in it. Okay. I could take this train down there. Let's do that. It's got stuff in it already. So you train. Uh, notice wall repair stations are disabled because there's no damage down there, but I can still manually drive it. I can just go uh, here and do control click, and it will it will drive down here. So let's do this like that. And of course you can survey the, in map view, you can survey the base and see what's going on while you're riding in the train. And let's go to manual mode. Like that. Now give me an artillery and let's see here's some power right here let's turn on turret coverage and you can see <laughs> you can see on this ribbon world there's the turret coverage from the artillery turret that I just put down there so you can easily cover the entire world top to bottom and I can just do a control click and dump a bunch of shells in there and it's going to fire now if you don't want it to fire automatically uh, you'd have to make a targeting remote which i did not make um, it needs one processing unit and one radar if you just do it like i did here it'll just fire it will fire at um, worms and it will fire at spawners it will not fire at individual bugs which is fine then i don't care about those i'm just going to kind of keep an eye on things here Make sure things don't get out of hand. I think we'll be okay with flamethrowers. I 
and it can fire. Oh yeah. Well, actually, I need. I do need a remote because I want to go a little bit beyond there. So with the targeting remote, you can fire much, much farther. Uh, I'm going to have to get a targeting remote so I can clear out all those bugs around the around the iron mine, and I need a processing unit to do that. So I will grab a processing unit. Uh, let's see. Do I have another? I don't have another locomotive. Personal train. Personal train. Oh, personal train. Personal train, I need a ride. Personal train, you come down here. Come down here and I need a ride. Let's put some more artillery shells in here. Oh, let's give it a chest of artillery shells. There and there and there and there and there and there and there. We'll let it fire, and I'll go get, um, as soon as the, this is a very long base, as I've said before. As soon as my personal train makes it down here, I'll go back and get a processing unit, make myself a targeting remote, and then when I come back, oh, I'll grab some more artillery shells while I'm down there, too. And then when I come back, I'll show you what that targeting remote does. In fact, here I think I probably have capacity to put these in there now, don't I? Let's give you some more. There we go. Train, don't leave me. Stop. When we come back, I'll show you what that targeting remote does. Okay, I went back to the to the main factory. I got a processing unit. I built a targeting remote. It looks like this right here. Artillery targeting remote. And I put it on the quick bar, the toolbar down here. I also put some steel chests down here to buffer. Oh, uh, well, I brought back more artillery shells and I put them in these steel chests so that it will load the artillery. So what you do with this artillery uh, targeting remote is you, you have to make it with using the processing unit. It's, you know, you craft one. You just need one. And so here we are. You can see the firing distance normally with the artillery. So when I pick up the targeting remote, you'll see what the distance is like when I'm holding the targeting remote. Watch this circle right here when I pick this up. Boop. So that's how far I can fire now with the artillery. And so I can go, I don't have radar here, do I? No. Uh, these are, yeah, these are old scans, but you can still see that there were, that there were bases there. So you just click like that. And it, the one there at the bottom right corner of that remote, and they are, the shells have radar, so you can see what they land. The one is the, the number of, that's the number of artillery that have shells in them, I think is what it is. I don't think it's the number of shells. I think it's the number of artillery. If you if you fire it between the spawners, so this is a spawner and that's a spawner. So if I shoot right there, bunk right there, I'll take out multiple spawners with that with the artillery shell when it lands. We see it land. There, so I took out multiple spawners. So you can kind of Kind of conserve your shots if you fire between them. Yeah, that'll probably take all four spawners with that one. I want to make sure I get all of these. Is there a spawner? No, that's just, that's just bugs. I don't know if I can take out those two. They're, they're kind of far apart, but let's find out. Let's find out if we can do it or not. I don't know. We shall see. Probably can't get both of those. Probably can get both of those, though. The shells do have radar, so that's why we can see this. It's live for a few moments, and then it will go away. I don't care about the worms. I just want the spawners. Okay, that got a spawner. So it looks like I'm... Are you finished firing? Yeah, well, I better check the counterattacks. Yeah, or their counterattacks, and they're doing a little damage, but but we're fine. We're fine. No, no audible alarms yet. So we're fine. There, there, and there. There, there, and there. 
there and there and there and in there somewhere I'm assuming we'll clear all these bugs out and then I can build a new wall and set up mining on this iron mine with remote steel because you know once you start doing mining and and steel smelting it generates more pollution so the bugs won't like that okay is that all the spawners in range well the range actually goes all the way down here okay so did I miss any spawners uh, nope those are worms those are worms I can take those out easily okay let's take these spawners out down here as many as I can with the shells that I brought I don't know how many shells are in there. How many shells do you have? Oh, you still have some. We're not empty yet. Now that one, okay, so that one's empty. Now we just have this chest. Oh, 47, that's quite a few. And plus those that are in the, plus those that are in the turret. It says five in there and 45 in there, okay. Yeah, I might be able to get all the, all these at least. I targeted that one already. I guess I didn't. I want to fire up here. Oh, that's the mine I'm going for right there. Yeah, that's a nice 12 million. Oh, that's even better. Wow, this is closer. And yeah, let's take, let's fire the rest of the shells, take these spawners out as many as I can. I think I targeted all the spawners. Let's fire up here and see what's up there. Any more spawners? Did I miss any spawners in the big counterattack? Let's watch. Yeah, we're fine. We are fine. This is the first wave that gets to the wall once the flame is on the ground from the flamethrowers. They don't stand a chance. And did I miss any bases? You see any bases that I missed? There's the one I just fired. Oh, you are right. It looked like a spawner there. You are a spawner. I don't see any there. Oh, I can shoot down to here, too. Let's do that. little survey. little artillery survey. Artillery exploration. Oh, I missed that one. i got to find that. i got to reveal that one now. Did I miss any spawners? Spawner, spawner, spawners. Okay, you are not a spawner, I don't think. I'm going to fire one there anyway, just to make sure. Those, I think, are all worms. And I don't see any more spawners. Okay, good. And there's still 11 shells, plus those that are in the artillery. Okay. So I'll let the counterattack happen. And once they're all finished counterattacking... I'll go out with the tank, take out those, uh, remove those biters, and put uh, furnaces down here for remote smelting. But actually, I've, this episode has been recorded over so many segments, I don't know how that, I think I'm going to be over time. So I will stop here. I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click on that thumbs up button. I'd appreciate it very much. And the next time, I will do... Remote steel. And I'll say confirm and we'll put it right here. Remote steel. I'll do that next time with electric furnaces. 
and I'll need to set up a train to put the train to bring a train down here, load the steel, and then take it back to the station, uh, back to the main base for to use in the main base. So thanks for watching. See you next time.